Okay, I'm going to take a digital image of a flower. This is made from dancing women from the 18th century. These are digital images. And I'm going to cut out a shape, a very simple shape, which is this one. Now, I've got some foiling, which is the leftover of a screen print. And I don't want to waste it, so I'm going to cut out the negative off this piece of foil. If I turn it over this way, lay it on a piece of greaseproof paper, I can get a clear image of what I'm doing. I'm just going to cut round the excess foiling. Now, because I haven't got any screen print facilities or heat presses here, I'm just going to use a box standard iron and I'm going to press this foil without glues or bonding. I'm going to press it and bond it between some throwaway, so I'm left with this, throwaway plastic. So, I've got some plastic bags, which I've cut open. I'm going to lay that with the greaseproof paper down, put that on. Put the lovely foil on the top of the pattern and then I'm going to put another piece of plastic over it so this bonds to it with the heat. So I'm going to take another sheet of plastic, place this over the top, so we've sandwiched my image inside there. Then all I'm going to do is lay the grease proof paper on top and iron. You can actually see the layers and you can feel the layers bonding together. You can do this with anything. You can grate bits of crayon in there, wax crayon, so that blends with all the colours. You can use lots of sorts of plastic bags. So basically, you're making your own base fabric. I've just literally got the leftovers from a foil print. That was the main screen print of the silver. So when that was taken off, I've got this, this excess here. Keep ironing till you feel the plastic bonding together with the heat. Then, when you feel that it's all melted together, the plastics, take the iron off and let it cool just for a bit. It's a bit like baking. You can actually look and you can see that the image is beautifully flattened down. Let it cool for a minute. There we go. And you're ready with a piece of work which will actually, you can see it better probably if I hold it down onto the white fabric. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, which is a digitally print of my dancing ladies, and I'm going to put some Bondweb on the back. Bondweb is just heat, here we go, heat, heat glue, really. One side's tracing paper, one side's glue. I lay the Bondweb on the back of the fabric, careful not to waste any, because all little bits count, so I'll just trim off the excess, because I can use them for other things. Glue side goes down, paper side this way, put the iron down and literally just heat press this to it. We are left with, aha, that. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is use very sharp scissors and cut round this shape. So, carefully I'm going to trim away the excess first and this bit's quite nice because you can do all the preparation with a glass of wine sat in front of the telly obviously don't drink too much so you'll ruin your design but then carefully cut into the work keep going all the way around okay I put the bond web on and what I'm going to do now is take the paper off glue side you can actually see it's like a sticky it's got an edge to it Place it down where you want it. I'm placing it in the middle of this plastic flower. Put the papers in between so you've got like a flower sandwich. Greaseproof paper on the back. And greaseproof paper on top. And you're ironing it again. The bond web is sticking with the heat. It's sticking the flower in the middle. But you're also going back over the plastic with the heat just to make it all bond together. When you've done that, just allow it to cool, because if you pull the tracing paper off while it's hot, it can pull your pattern off. Okay, these are the flowers for um, the foundling 
museum project um, that's going to go to Alexander Palace and um, huge amounts of research as starting points. I've looked at objects from the Foundling Museum and also other things in the 18th century, images in the 18th century. So we've got fanning ladies, we've got um, crying children and crying mothers. Um, clocks repeat patterns of the 18th century in florals. And what I wanted to do was take the images, spin them in Photoshop and in design, and get the actual images making the florals, and then put them in a repeat pattern. So it's a repeat pattern using the colours that they used in the 18th century, and blow them up completely out of proportion to huge big flowers that you think, oh wow, that's pretty, and then you look closely and you realise it's baby's eyes or an arm or <laughs> So these the are dancing ladies going round in the... Yeah, they're dancing ladies with Sorry. fans. And then in the middle it's the dancing ladies done in line and repeated. So it made quite interesting patterns. It was a bit like when you look through one of... A kaleidoscope. That's the one. Whack it in an embroidering. <laughs> Screw on the bottom. And the round halo bit on top. This is just to keep the work nice and flat. It's a brute force. It's quite bouncy because it's plastic. So you just want to have it tight like a drum. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch, so when you can see it up to the light, I'm going to stitch this green applique flower that I've put over the top of the plastic on the sewing machine. I'm going to use a free machine embroidery foot, which is this, or a darning foot. Put the foot down, and I'm going to literally just draw now with the sewing machine. So I'm going to just draw over where the print is on the fabric, and I'm just attaching the fabric to the background plastic. Just as simple as that. Lots and lots of lines, straight line stitches. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to try not to keep stopping because you get a nice flow, a nice consistency. So I'm just literally using the lines to guide me. Now you don't want to cling to the work as if it's like a life jacket, just relax your hands. And just sew it. You can put your needle in and spin it around if you want to have a look where you've gone. But you can see, you can get quite close and really, really detailed. The idea with the threads is you're putting on an extra layer, you're building up a bit more detail. And I would keep doing this, and it will also make the silhouettes of the dancing women stand out more. Here we go. Okay, and I'm going to keep building this all the way round in one colour. Okay, I'm putting um, a black thread on the bottom. Hold it this way and allowing the tension so it's not bagging. I'm putting a black thread on the bottom and a black thread on the top. There we go. Putting it in the bobbin. And I'm going to pick out just some of the stitches on the print just so it doesn't look stuck on it, it all starts to blend together. So I'm putting a machine embroidered black on the top, the same as on the bottom. Again, free machine embroidery. Foot down. Get yourself so you're comfy and so you can see where you're working and I'm just going to build into some of these stitches, leave some of the print but then build some areas in. Now what I'm doing, I'm sewing quite fast and I'm just putting like a line on the edge, so a bit of shading. I'm just putting a bit of shading on the edge just to bring out the flower. So. If I slowed it down and did every single stitch, I'd lose the, some of the fluidity of it. So I'm putting my fingers stretched onto here. You're, right, you're not going to sew your fingers. 
because the needle's going up and down and my fingers are nowhere near the um, end of the embroidery foot. So I'm just literally, the movement's in the end of my fingers, nice and relaxed. And it is literally as if I'm just shading with a pencil. The movement's in this bit of your hand. It's good when you're doing anything this fine to keep taking breaks because it's quite heavy on your eyes. Ah, there you go. And this, these are eyes, these are child's eyes all around here. They look like, um, as you said, peacock feathers or owl's eyes, if you can just about see them. But that's it's actually a child's face mm -hmm. and there's lips and noses in there somewhere. So what mm -hmm. we want to do with these is not only just digitally print them, try with different techniques really. So there's the hand techniques, hand sewing, machine sewing, Lots of different printing techniques like flocking, foiling, um, and combine them together so it's not just a flat surface really, yeah. so it's a bit more interesting than that. So you look at them and you think, oh nice lace pattern, and then you realise it's actually a bit more poignant than that. It's about the terrible plight of the women and the children. So that's, yeah, explain a bit about um, why you've chosen the Family Museum. What's, what's... I just went to see the exhibition, it was recommended to me by Andrew Salmon from the Knitting and Stitching, and... Um, the objects actually got me more than more than the swatches of cloth left by the women so they could um, pin them to the children that they um, were leaving behind. Either they'd been there, they'd uh, got, couldn't afford to look after the children, um, terrible circumstances, or some had gone to prison. And the stories, I mean, I, we both got speaking to one of the ladies that had researched the project and she'd trace what had happened to some of the children, some of the mothers, and it was just so... <laughs> it was one of those. You know, you look at quite a clinical display, and then you look at the the works or the objects that they'd Tiny left. Tiny little bits of fabric that they cut out of their dresses, or um, little tokens, little buttons and things, little... and they'd written little messages on them for their children to remember them by. So they? if they... Never went back to claim them. They didn't always go back, didn't very often go back. No. Again, you're going to keep sewing, keep moving the work all the way around. So, no particular line is picked out, it's just the whole area of an explosion of the flowers. So, I always use machine sticks. My work's very heavily machine stitched, but this because it's print as well, I want all the print, the machine embroidery, all the layering to work together. So that's what we're starting to build in. So what I'd do is then I'd highlight just some of the areas in the middle. So I'm just going to lift my thread up and move into the whoop, move into the middle of the flower now. So it's working the middle bit. Okay, so into the middle bit. Now, I think it'd be quite nice at this stage if I bring up, pick out some of the green and the black working together. So I'm going to do this by putting the green on the bottom of the bobbin. So I do this. I put the green that I've picked out before. Here we go. Thread just a bit on. It's just like keep changing a colour palette when you're doing a painting. There we go. It will click off when it's finished. There you go. Now, I want the green to come up, so I've got the two colours together. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the green in the bobbin case. But this time, instead of allowing it to be balanced like this, I'm going to loosen the tension on this bobbin. So you can do this with a little screwdriver. There we go, let's see, one of these little flat-headed screwdriver. And I'm going to turn it anti-clockwise, just a tiny bit. Now, if you haven't got many bobbins, I suggest you do this over the desk or another colour. I'm just going to do this to loosen it. Now, you don't want it so loose that the screw falls out, but you just want a bit of the colour coming up. So you're allowing, by loosening it, the tension off, the thread to come up. 
and obviously you test a bit on a bit of fabric first but I'm not going to. So the green underneath, the black on top, tighten the thread on top by moving it towards the plus, pick up your thread, I'm going to show you on a piece of fabric what this does just because it'll be easier to see. Okay, I'm going to show you on a white background because it's easier to see. I've got the top thread black, bottom thread green, whipping stitch. The green thread is going to come up really loose and the black thread is tighter and literally just draw. But how slowly you move the needle will mean more of these wonderful green lumps come up. And you can literally draw with a sewing machine like a pen and you get a fantastic result. That's a bit too tight on the machine then and if that happens just thread it back up again. Here we go. So when you've got it how you like, with enough green, enough black coming through, practice, do it on the real thing. You get this wonderful effect where the two threads are working together. I would build these up and build these up and build these up until it's no stop Liberace me. But what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a cheese grater and some wax crayons. And I'm just going to, as if like you highlight with a watercolour, I'm going to on the back of this flower, I'm just going to grate where there's some gaps. I'm going to grate some wax crayons. I'm going to go all the way round. Obviously, I wouldn't then use it in cooking. Might. And I'm going to keep going like this into areas. There we go. So if you push it into the areas that you want, you know that the wax is going to be. So I'm going to aim this away here. So as if I want a green splodge here. And then again, lovely grease proof paper. Whack the grease proof paper on. Use the heat to melt it. And you're just going to use the hot iron to spread the areas of the wax you want on the plastic. You can't go wrong with this. If you make a mistake, you put a hole in it, just whack another bit of plastic underneath and just sew into it. That's half the fun of this kind of thing. There's no wrong or right way. Let it cool and then you're going to peel off the grease proof paper and see what colours have gone on under the print. Okay, peel this off when it's cool and you can see you're starting to build the areas off where the wax is sticking to the image. And then on this side, which is the real side, you start to get layers building up. So it is look like a beautiful peacock's feather. Obviously now this could do for window transparencies. This is going to be an installation piece so it won't be washed because the wax would not stay on. Okay, keep building it up till you get the effect you want. But I just thought, you know, we're both mothers and the, and the thought of just leaving your child and just and they gave them names as well and the, the children didn't always have the names did they mm. they, were, they were given a new start really but it just struck me that it was just such a moving exhibition I wanted to create something that was beautiful trying out different techniques because I work well I've worked mainly in machine embroidery that's what my work's known for but I wanted to just play with everything really but I wanted to make these huge panels and usually my work would be more narrative than that. So I wanted to hide the meaning. Mm. So I was looking at people like Timorous Beasties where they've taken a print and then it's only when you look close you go, okay, that's someone <laughs> being shot. Mm, nice. <laughs> but that's what I wanted it to be, you know, a bit of a yeah. double-edged effect of it, really. Okay. Okay. And can we conclude this a bit, please? So round it off so it's not just as open as it is. <laughs> The project is going to tour and um, we're hoping to run workshops at the Knitting and Stitching Show and we'd like it to tour to do workshops with all ages really but we'd like a bit more of a community feel about it because I work in quite a community way with my work. Um, I'd like it to go into schools and people just to have fun creating their own um, pieces based on the Founder Museum or based on images or relationships they yeah. have with each other really so it's a starting yeah. point yes 
for ways of working yes. and amalgamating lots and lots of different techniques so it's not just about textiles it's mixing textiles with metal or textiles with ceramics or textiles with anything really it's just seeing the idea is just seeing a design process so from initial ideas through to a finished product because it's such a it's such a skill not just for young people in schools but for anyone to learn mm. and also the the topic's quite poignant really okay then thank you very much